Five things that can cause this. Look at you. Yeah, Amy. With no audience, you bang the freaking thing. With authority. With authority. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. Um, so. Can she ask us to give her dedicated? President's report this evening, I just want to thank um, the administration on preemptively figuring out a plan for this coronavirus and what our district is We're in the process. We're still in the process. Yes, but for taking the time to do that. Preemptively, or um, I just want to thank Hold you. Hold on one second, let me. Let's get preemptive on tape. It's going mic or ear? It would be. Mike. Mike, Mike. right? Yeah. Uh, okay, so we'll move on to superintendent's report. Yeah, I have no report this evening. Next. I'm kidding. Of course, <laughs> of course I have a report. Thanks, Jim. Oh, okay. I, have, I have like everything to report. Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, we are we are actually we're really I think overall in in very good shape uh, regarding the plan. I think what we are fighting more than anything is time. Um, you know, I think the hope when this initial uh, guidance went out on Thursday afternoon that you know we'd be looking at something far off and, you know, weeks, if not months away, if, if ever having to need it. But um, as things become more and more intense or whatever, you know, word you want to use, um, you know, we're, that's, I think, the thing we're fighting most. I can tell you. So so what we've done, you know, when the guidance came out late, thir uh, late Thursday, so I uh, um, uh, sent an email out to staff first thing Friday morning basically saying, look, you know, we know that Google Classroom is going to be the primary um, method of delivery. It's, it's what the vast majority of our people are, are already on. We know this. We have Chromes, you know, pretty much K-12. Like, we had a lot of good things in place. So we ask people, start thinking about Google Classroom, start just in your brain, start thinking about it, start thinking about what professional development you might need, start thinking about you know, lessons that you can adapt, all of that. Um, with the idea that with meetings that were going on today, tomorrow, and a little bit throughout the week, department meetings, PLC meetings, grade level meetings, that our principals and administrators are going to assess where you are with Google Classroom. I can tell you now. Dawn has a, a her staff meeting on Thursday, but just from her knowledge of her staff, without you know formally polling them, we know that we've got well over ninety five percent coverage of staff on Google Classroom. Like there's not going to be a lot of PD we're going to have to do, but we will look to of course provide any PD. Like for example, in this building, it was one teacher, one person, as it does not have a Google Classroom. Um, so, so, so that was the first challenge as far as staff is concerned. Um, the other uh, issue, of course, is the technology at home. Mm -hmm. So we, we thought about going in, in two directions. The first thing was looking at um, um, internet, uh, Wi-Fi and internet availability at home. Mm -hmm. We really knew that if we were talking about kids that don't have it at home, we're really going to be focusing on our free and reduced lunch population because we really believe that that is the primary population that would not have it at home. Um, so we physically called every one of those individuals. We felt that that would be more, more efficient than a survey that we may or may not get back. So we called all of those kids. In addition, secondary level, it's going to happen here tomorrow, it happened at the high school today, we did survey the kids. We felt they were old enough to answer that question reasonably. And then we're going to cross, now that's all kids, right? So in case we miss anybody. By the way, in addition to free and reduced lunch, we also reached out to guidance counselors and teachers. Are, is there anybody on your radar screen that you know of who's had issues with Submitting just online work, there. just you know, who may not be free to reduce lunch. Let us know those kids. We'll reach out to them, and that's where the survey came in. So that's all kids, and we're cross-referencing those lists. We feel very confident uh, that we will probably have fewer. I'm going to I'm going to be conservative here. I think we're going to have fewer than 100 kids total. I think it's going to be less than that, but it, but I think we can safely say uh, less than 100 kids. Like for example, uh, the high school was 20, 20, you know, out of a thousand kids. Uh, Wanamasa was one. So I mean, we're we're going to probably be under a hundred. Ken, uh, we've worked with Mike Hall. Uh, Ken worked with uh, I think the vendor uh, was it Kajit or did well, you find we're working else? on a couple things right okay. now. We have Kajit down to give us the devices for nothing. 
and down to 1497 a month which was a lot less than their original quote that you guys right. saw on the budget. Um, of course, every vendor is coming out of the woodwork. Yeah, you know, yeah but, but Mike like has that. been able to work with Altice, Optimum, um, and now they have minimum, so they're different things, but that it looks like about $2 uh, a month per student, but their coverage isn't, you know, they're not giving advice. It's just using their hotspots. So I called the New Brunswick uh, Board of Ed. They're they're uh, they're using them and they're checking on whether they've had any. They just started any issues with you know holes uh, because it's it's whatever local, whatever hotspots they have. So whether it's Starbucks or or, or wherever, uh, I'm not even sure because Mike talked to them, so I'm not even sure if it's home Wi-Fi if that covers everything. There's a you know there's a heat map that Mike was looking at. So we're trying to. We're trying to figure out whether that'll cover but the everything or not. But the hotspots are saying then they have to go to Starbucks. Or they have no, to no, get no. Uh, no, they very well could be in their house, business. depending on where they live. Okay. How, how if the hotspots, hot yeah, yeah, if, Starbucks? if it reaches. Now I don't know if there are any uh, dead spots anywhere. So that's what we're trying to but the other figure thing out. Said, but if the numbers right. come back low enough, we could pay the, the you know the 14, 14 bucks a month per kid if it's less than a hundred. Yeah. And then even because if we even if we do it now because it's only a couple months per month, so the the cost for this year isn't isn't a, a lot we can be absorbed in this year's budget, um, and then that would be going. It's really it's just accelerating something we we were discussing anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's just moving three months of it into this year's budget. So uh, so we're working on those numbers. We hope. Because we hope to have final numbers from the schools by what, Thursday? Uh, the absolute latest. I, absolute I should latest, have them so. by tomorrow. Right. All right. So then hopefully tomorrow then I, we can finalize, you know, what we're doing and have that, uh, you know, it'll take them right. a couple of days. And, and once, I mean, obviously, you know, this is a special circumstance, but, you know, we've been talking about doing something like this for a long time and getting a real handle on exactly how many kids and, and what kids. So this, this really gave us the opportunity to do that. Yes, Just sir. one question. How did we qualify with them? whether they had internet or not. I'm just curious. Well, because um, you may not have Comcast or Cablevision or Fios, you may think to yourself, well, yeah, I've got it on my phone. I mean, are, are we, we specifically... Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Yes. Because, Basically, yeah. what we said was, do you have the... I mean, and, uh, Kelly, you, I know you wrote some of it out, but it was it was basically the gist was, you know, Wi-Fi or internet at home that, that, is, that is conducive to students being able to access and conduct and complete educational, you know, okay. materials. Not that I'm just looking at something on my phone that I may have yeah. to do like this. Yes. Okay. So that was part of the conversation. I'm Absolutely. Surprised that little Jim, thing. I have a quick question too. Oh, I'm What's sorry. that? I'm sorry? That a student could, do you have internet access that a student could use to complete school? Complete school work, right. What about um, the teachers that don't send the computers home with their students, more so in the elementary yeah, we're, schools? We're, 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 You're encouraging them to do that. We're obviously. getting. We're, we're going to get. I'm going to get. You're getting to that. Yeah, I'm okay. getting to that. Okay. Very, yeah, we're we're getting to that. So okay. So the other technology problem then is we have the Chrome, so that's not the issue. Uh, secondary six through twelve, kids take them home. Really shouldn't be much of a problem at all. We might have a few. Uh, kids have loaners. Maybe there's a few lost uh, chargers, so kids charge in school. So that's you know something we're taking into consideration. The big problem, and I think I mentioned this last week regarding the elementary. Obviously, they don't take them home, but we could. Also, let me just say that we do think that the youngest of grades, pre-K, and there is it. We weren't sure if pre-K was going to be included in all this since it's not a mandated grade level, but it is. If we offer it, it is. So um, pre-K, K, and one will really be more of a hybrid, certainly using some technology, but also we're developing packets for the kids to, to use um, because we certainly don't think that that's something that they're going to be able to do. We feel very confident that from grades two on that, that primarily technology will be the method of delivery. That doesn't mean things can't be printed out and what have you at home. Have we thought about also um, surveying the two to four kids to find out if they have a device at home because many kids have their you own? Know, we, yes. Right. But we felt like that was just going to get very complicated, and we have 14 different surveys going on. We have the devices. Okay. We're going we're gonna to give them to you. Okay. So uh, we did find that we were about 200 chargers short, because as you know, the elementary, they are charged in, a, in, a, in one cart, and then they're just handed out. So uh, I think you put in the purchase order for the chargers. It should be here about Monday or Tuesday. Right. We did have enough chargers if we didn't do... I think below grade three. So from grade three up, we would have had enough chargers. 
Uh, but we felt that let's get them anyway. We, we always can use chargers and, and what have you. So, um, Do so those have cases? They don't have cases. So that's going to be now part of what we talked about was I think if we're going to do this third and fourth grade we could probably give them to the third and fourth graders but the younger kids uh, are, I think our thought is we may have to have like a parent pickup yeah. situation and sign out sign them. out because we do have to keep obviously keep track and keep record and have the parent you know come in and, and, and pick it up but we're, so we're thinking about when's the best time to do that we don't know that we want to do that during the school day obviously. It might have to be an evening thing or right after school or something like that because it's security. And then, of course, you know, we're supposed to be social distancing, which is just completely contrary to the concept of public school in the first place. So anyway, um, and by the way, we are not taking the approach. Uh, we have not canceled all of our trips. We are have uh, said if it's out of state, it's probably best not to, you know, go in that direction. But if it's a local trip and there's no issue, you know, we're, we're moving forward as of right now. The guidance, by the way, from the Department of Health and everybody else is not to cancel these things mm -hmm. unless it's something that is headed to a more targeted, you know, what New they Rochelle. call a hot it's zone. A yeah, if you're going to New Rochelle <laughs> or, or, you know, whatever. <laughs> on a cruise. Um, <laughs> on a cruise. Um, is, is the Holocaust trip coming up? It is. We are talking with Ken. Now, remember, that's Kane's. That's part of our Kane class, so that really is going to be in conjunction with Kane. Kelly, do you know any more on that? Yeah, we, you know, we're watching it. It's a little yeah. ways off right, right now. A number of trips were canceled today by the agencies, not by us, but by the places where groups were going. Well, yeah. So we canceled right. about yeah. plus, you know, five or six different buses and, right. and so, substitutes because of where they were going. Right. They canceled. But we just had a trip, I think, to the library yeah, last yeah, week with some kids. Yeah, so we, yeah. we did, uh, you know, right. So, so I mean, we, we're, you know, we're going to try to maintain as normal much system. normal life as possible here until someone tells us that we shouldn't. Now, also, let me back up a little bit again and really be clear and, and state this. And I, I think you guys get it, but I want to just make sure, you know, the masses get it. That this plan only kicks into effect the virtual days towards our 180 re statutory requirement only goes into effect if we are by written order of the Department of Health or the Monmouth County Regional Health Commission, not the Monmouth County Department of Health, but the Monmouth County Regional Health Commission to close. If we decide because someone, someone's cousin in Wanamasa is positive, is presumptive positive, and we, you know, and whatever happens, happens, hysteria breaks out, this, that, whatever, and we make that decision, that does not count. That's one of our emergency days, That's what, and, would, and, and if we go past those days like that, we would have to make some of those days up. Case in point, Red Bank Regional just said that the, 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 they, they closed for a similar type of reason. It was a sibling of, a, of, of goes to the school. They closed today, they are closing tomorrow. The superintendent just sent out an email to everybody about half an hour ago saying, these are our days. The, the Monmouth County Health Commission told us flat out, we do not think you need to close your school. This is on you. So these are not days that they have to deliver virtual education or anything. Even if they did, they wouldn't count. All right. So that's, I want to make sure everybody understands that and is very clear. I know that, you know, we, think, we put out the, the, the letter, the guidance yesterday, and everybody's running around, when are we closing? When are we, like, you know. We have to keep that in mind, right? So, um, so the chargers are being ordered. Uh, so when we're looking at the hybrid piece uh, with uh, with those. So there's still a couple questions. Special education services. Um, you know, those teachers are preparing things, and we'll be addressing their um, students as best as possible. As far as related services like OTPT, speech, those are not going to be uh, provided. Uh, they will be provided uh, in, a, in a compensatory fashion after we return. So basically, we'll have to make that up. Whatever's missed will have to be made up. All right. So and that's 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 coming down from the state because I guess you know technically you're not kids can't um, self uh, tr uh, provide services, right? So I mean you, you you can't really do that. So so that's not happening. Food service. Um, you know, we asked Jackie and Liz to kind of hang around. That's one that there's sort of an expectation from the state. They've given us some guidance that free and reduced lunch kids at the very least, and maybe in some cases we've heard like all kids, um, have to be or have to have access to meals. Uh, Ken, you want to yes. jump on that so, a little bit? Uh, in our business administrator uh, 
you know, group uh, group uh, emails. We've been going back and forth. But it does look like the Department of Ed is saying if it's going to count as a school day, that you will provide uh, uh, serve, uh, lunch services to at least a free and reduced lunch population. So that's something we've talked about. There are different ways. Most most schools look like the consensus is some kind of bag lunch. So you know we can't keep things to temperature. So you're not you're not doing hot meals. Okay. It's going to, and even the cold meals. Uh, I know Jackie and Liz can jump in at any time. Are, are looking at coolers <laughs> as to as to how uh, we're going to provide that. So there are different options. Doing central pickup uh, type locations where we have coolers and and things of that nature where people could come. Even if we did one school, two schools. You know, different different business administrators have been talking about different things. Uh, so where we had different locations where people could come, pick up, and leave, uh, or and or where we could use our buses. And, and some of this is based on the concept that okay, the school day counts as a as a school day, so we're going to have bus drivers with nothing to do basically, right? So we might as well use them. We're going to have probably a hundred aides with nothing to do, and if we're paying everyone, it counts as a school day. Then we can use, you know, the plan would be to utilize uh, the staff. So we could either uh, utilize buses to either go to centralized bus stops per, uh, you know, per um, location geography-wise, uh, and they could even stay there for an hour or so. Uh, anything else you heard of? Uh? There's a couple things. One is the bus stops. Another mm -hmm. one that just came out while you guys were in a meeting was setting. Right, like a three-day pack I saw, or, 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 right. Um, and this is breakfast and lunch we're talking about, right? So we have the ability to get those meals already pre-made that are shelf-stable or frozen that we can just pull from the freezer on a daily basis, or we could, we also have staff that we could make them as long as the school was open to anybody who came in. So the bus could be centrally located, the bus bus stops, the bus, or we could have, as Ken said, individual schools, kiosks set up, like this school would be perfect, because you have that lock that's the room there, mm -hmm. to set up a kiosk there for parents to come in, have the identification or the PIN number of their student, put it in the system to make sure they're eligible for it, and uh, then just and we would really provide it for anybody, right? So if somebody wanted to, yeah, I don't know if they would, but if somebody wanted to get lunch that day. Right. Well, um, if you serve Quentin, get, you know, if you serve his, you know, kale pasta. I come for the mac and cheese. Yeah. And, the, and they will come. Hot dog pepper right? and pizza. I would come for that. <laughs> right. kale, pasta. Tell you. kale pasta. Kale spaghetti was very good. What, what else as far as breakfast and lunch? What, what, can you give us an idea as to what you would serve? Like breakfast bars, dry cereal. I don't know, s'mores pop tarts are we're always one of my favorite. The pretzel? What's that? The pretzel pop tarts. Really? But there are like several breakfast bars that would be available. And then lunch would be more than one yeah. With milk? Right. And then uh, lunch would be just the sandwiches. Turkey sandwich and ham sandwiches. We've got fruit, fruit, vegetables, so it's still carrots. Still all the components, right? The fruit, vegetable. Uh, yeah, and all the five components would be, unless we get a way where it's only have the sandwich, like the, the protein and the you, the child nutritionist also applied for that through the USDA. Uh, that's what they were. That's Correct. what they were talking about. The okay. Yeah. Right. So they would apply for the non-congregated feeding as well as the component. Because the regulations state <coughs> that it's a congregated. Right. Um, have, have you thought through the? Uh, do you have more to talk about this? No, no. Please oh, jump in. Uh, do you have more? Have you thought through the um, support methodology for both the staff and the parents? And for when this for when this all goes when you say support methodology what do you, you know mean? like when people have problems like logging on or people have questions about yes, what to do we, or well, whatever yeah have, whatever the <laughs> whatever the support methodology yeah is um, so is. we've talked about uh, providing uh, video tutorials that we would put online for things like how to access Google Classroom how to log in whatever and of course I think administratively we would still be available for parents to call and email that if they have questions. I mean, our staff, I mean, that's the other question, you know, that, that we are talking about. And, we, and, and uh, there's, in a 
you know, uh, coincidentally, uh, serendipitously, um, we have instructional count. Mike, Mike Riley and I have been communicating over the last week because, you know, we're talking about what would the expectations be for staff. And I, uh, instructional council is going to meet on Thursday. This is going to be a big topic. I've asked all the administrators to come to that meeting. And we have, of course, representatives from each building. And Mr. Riley is there. So it's a great opportunity for us to talk and, and you know, hash out some things. Um, you know, one of the things is what is, what is, the, rec what is the expectation for staff? As Ken said, you know, we're home. You're, you're responsible for instruction. You're getting paid. You know, one of the concerns I have is that we have some people who, you know, like like aides, like he said, you know, like in this kind of world, we're, we're they're home, we're paying them, but there isn't necessarily something that they can do directly with the kids. Um, some of the secretarial staff, same kind of thing. I mean, you know, not that they have nothing to do, but um, you know, so how long? For a long right, time. exactly. I mean, if right. it's if it's a week, it right. might be one thing. If it's a month, it, it could. It, and you know, I know we all kind of chuckle a little bit, but I don't think that that is completely crazy out of the question at this point. So, um, you know, so we're talking about that, but also like just in a day, what is the expectation for staff? And what a lot of, I've been, there was a conference call, superintendent, uh, like a Zoom with superintendents yesterday. So we were talking about it and our, our um, thought was, is that we probably designate a time in the day that, that staff needs to need to be on, you know, available to students, whether it be through email and, you know, what if like nine to one say every day, you so they post their assignments in the beginning of the day, and then they are available during the day for, for kids to for questions and what have you. Um, and I just say nine to one. You know, it's not firm. That's not even, you know. But, wouldn't it just be the school day? Or well, you know what? we got to take out for prep. we got to take out for lunch. You know, we kind of have to match up. What, how many minutes in a day does a, does, is a student contact time is per contract? And then, so, for example, if you look at the secondary level, they teach three blocks a day. It, you know, 82 times Right, but the three. point is, if you did the school day, they'd still have their prep and they'd still have their lunch. Right, so but I think it's easier just to say these are the, these are the hours across the board. It's, it's consistent. I think we think it's important that it's work. I mean, look, if the kids are home, they're going to sleep till. They're not getting up at 7.25 to get on their, you know, to get on well, whatever. Order so we think, order. like, being available during a time in the day, that doesn't mean that a teacher will camp or an email at night, but, but that, that would be the expectation, you know. And, but we're still working on all that. So Question. just about the support process. Yes. So at some point, it'd probably be good to kind of talk through that support and make sure we're all kind of aware of it. Because yes. That's the, and, that's and the, and because that's the thing that falls down the most on these well, emergency. Right. And as far as, as far as staff support, like I said, we <clears> have, we are in very good shape with Google Classroom. However, um, we are going to talk on Thursday about what, uh, and, and peop, uh, our tech specialists and people, I mean, one thing I want to say during all this, I think our staff has been outstanding from what I'm hearing across the board of people helping people, our mm -hmm. tech specialists helping people. And we do, we, once we assess everything, once Dawn has her meeting on, on Thursday and we're going to meet at IC, one of the things we're going to talk about is what what PD needs absolutely do people have. And the, one of the things that we've been talking about, maybe you've seen some other districts that have had, you know, closing for a day to discuss a closing to me <laughs> seems strange, but some have had uh, early dismissals or, you know, a delayed opening to give staff some time within the school day to collaborate and meet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Some have done that. Right now we haven't done that. However, we, we're not opposed to doing something like that if we needed to. But obviously we would want, want to give parents a lot of uh, time and, and, yeah. and, you know, so maybe we'd be looking at maybe sometime next week, you know, and we would give a few days notice. So, mm -hmm. And we'd, we'd probably be thinking about an early dismiss, <clears throat> or excuse me, uh, delayed opening. Uh, because I think people are more in tune with the concept of delayed opening, and it's it's an inconvenience either way. But because of sports in the afternoon, you know, like kids who if they have scrimmages, like so this stuff is starting to come up. So we worry about kids going home, then having to come back for yeah. sports, and also we think sometimes just staff is more fresh in the morning. You know, just <laughs> kind of get them when they're when they're rocking and rolling. So we'll leave the tired times for later. But um, you know, it's been almost six one half dozen the other. We just have I think traditionally more. Uh, delayed openings than we do early dismissals and so you know um, we can plan for that a little bit differently but anyway um, so you know we, we can talk about one of the things I want to talk about this week is assess do we need to do that some school districts have flat out said we are not doing that you have plenty of time you have meetings you have this you have that and you know part of your professional duties is to plan and that's what you do every day um, others have taken a different posture we're right now you know not committal one way or the other we'll see what our staff needs and if our staff needs it and we think it's appropriate then we're open to do it um, another question that came up regarding staff and this is some of the guidance that i put out now i'm 
you know, a lot of what I put out is coming from the guidance, right? So um, one thing that I think has created a little bit of concern amongst our staff is when I said to them, look, be prepared that you might, even though schools might be closed, that you may have to come in. And, you know, so that has created some discussion. Um, but let me just read from where that comes. This comes right from the Department of Health, and it's, will schools be asked to close if there's a COVID-19 outbreak in your community? And one of the comments right here just says, during school dismissals, child care programs in schools may stay open for staff, if not ill, while students stay home. This allows teachers to develop and deliver lessons remotely and, from, and for other staff to continue to provide services. So I'm not saying we are going to stay open for staff. I just simply am putting it on their radar screen that you know, I, I, I don't know if they're going to come back to us and say, well, if in order for this day to count towards your 180, your building has to be open, you know, and if kids don't show up, then kids don't show up. But your building was open and your your staff was there. Now, if, if they don't make us do that, I don't think that that is the way we go, because if schools are closed in mass, you know, teachers are going to have kids at home and, and what have you. So that's not the way I think we should go. I'm just at least for some of our staff, I mean, as Ken said, you know, people are going to want to get paid. People are going to, you know, there's some yeah, important things. personnel. We're, right. We're so we're going to have in. to have some people in and, and available. Uh, you know, I'll talk about with the administrators in terms of their availability and what have you. Much of what we can do, we can do remotely. So, I, you know, if there's nobody to observe, you know, it's not like we're going to go and do an observation in somebody's house. You know, I mean, that's not going to happen. <laughs> So, you know, that's an interesting idea and whatever, but no, you know, I mean, so, so, uh, you know, obviously if people are well and the building is clean and all that, you know, I, I don't know, we, we, we would talk about that with the Department of Health and we would see where that would go. Right. But, um, so there's a lot of things, but just to give you, I know, I, I don't mean, but you know, it, 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 it is a lot, but uh, so just to give you another idea, I've spoken to Mayor Siciliano about how we can coordinate, you know, town services with our services, uh, if we need things in terms of uh, delivery, uh, you know, can they help us out with food deliveries if that's something we're doing? Is there a, is there a town location space that we could use as a central drop-off, things like that? Um, I talked with Chief Peters today. We were just coordinating if there were any services that we would need. Ken and I are meeting tomorrow with Tom Caruso of OEM, and the Department of Health is coming to town hall, and a few other you know groups, so we're meeting with them tomorrow. Uh, there was a meeting tomorrow for nurses and um, security and, and head of facility. They canceled that. I'm not sure. This was going to be at the prosecutor's office of Freeld. I'm not sure if they canceled that because of anything, but they're not having it. I see, like I mentioned, is um, is on Thursday afternoon. Um, our conference, our uh, county uh, superintendent's meeting is Friday morning, um, and and you know we, a lot's going on. So, uh, I I would say, I mean, if we had, I could say, I think, clearly, if we had, you know, one. One more week, we would we would be more than ready, you know, without question. I, I fear that you know, that's not, now. Let me say this: I think a a forced closing is is not imminent, you know, in any way. But I can't promise that if something didn't happen tomorrow, that we wouldn't have to make a decision about what we're doing for tomorrow and the next day. You know what I mean? Is this a document that you've written that you can share with us? Well, we're, we're still working on the plan. So once we develop the plan, which we do have a draft of, but and we have a, what we do is we have a Google Doc and we're all filling it and, and everybody is, is working on it. But um, and the county right now is kind of asking us for their drafts and where are we? Once we have it, and, and I'll, I'll let, uh, you will get it, and, and, and the parents will get it, and everybody will get it. But we want to, you know, make sure that. I mean, we have Amy, it. would you think that after we get that, we should have like a meeting to review it together, or just? I don't think so. I, th I mean, I think we can review it next week at our meeting. I mean, our no, goal is to have it done by the end of this week, hmm. um, so we could potentially, or at least, have a really good portion of it in your packets on on Friday. Um, and when I say a week, I mean, I think it's not going to take us a week to do the plan. I think we'll be done the plan by the end of this week. But, you know, any PD needs, any, you know, mm -hmm. distribution of Chromebooks, like, that's not going to happen this week, really. I mean, it's going to take a little bit of time. So we think by next week we can get that all done, and then, you know, we'd be ready to roll. So, you know. So, two questions. One, the, and I know a lot of this is to be determined, right? But in your mind, is the expectation that teachers would be posting lessons and assignments and the kids would be sending it back? Or would there be the Google Classroom equivalent of a Zoom meeting, right? Where they would, there would be a teaching. I think right now it's more the first than, than the second. Or a recorded lesson, or some, that they push out. And that could be too. I mean, this that what what we know is is that everybody, ninety five percent plus, are familiar with Google Classroom, have a Google Classroom, and know how to post. You know, knew how to do the basics of 
what you first described. Right, right. Post something, kids do it. I mean, it really may, even though we're talking about virtual, it may become very um, um, more traditional where it's, okay, here's your, here's your, you have your textbook at home, read 1.2 and answer the questions at the back of the book, which is not necessarily something we would want to see on a day-to-day -day basis right. in the classroom, but it may have to suffice for these purposes. Now, some people are more sophisticated. Some people are already using video lessons. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be our expectation that everybody is doing that. Certainly, but though that could be part of the PD needs that like next week if we did something after school or whatever during the day that we could say, okay, so-and-so is going to be doing something on Google Classroom. So-and-so is going to be doing something on uh, Spotcast or somebody's going to be doing something on Flipgrid. So to give people more tools in their mm -hmm. tool chest that they can utilize. Because the first obviously lends itself to some subject matters than others, right? Like yeah. A new well, math concept is a lot harder for a kid to read. I'm sorry, say that again. Like a new math concept is going to be a lot harder for a kid to no teach themselves. No doubt. The teacher. But, but, we, we, but a lot of our math teachers, for example, you may utilize Khan Academy, yeah. so they're providing right. videos. And, mm -hmm. and, and so they're, that's what I mean. They're already thinking about these things. Okay. And so I think, you know, look, it's going to be hard mm -hmm. to be completely uniform, and it's going to be hard. You know, mm -hmm. some people are going to be very basic, and others are going to be nailing it, you right. know, and then doing this, doing this, doing this. And I think, you know, what we have to do is just realize that this is an unprecedented situation. I mm -hmm. can't remember ever where they were telling us, you do virtual yeah, and we're going to count right. this, you know. Yeah. I mean, even after Sandy, when H1N1 11 years ago, right. after 9-11 uh, and anthrax and all that was going on. I mean, a lot, you know, the, 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 the concern has happened before. Right. We've seen that before. But I've never had a situation <coughs> where people have said, we're going to count, count these days. So, so we are in uncharted territory, and I think we just have to be open and flexible. And you know, what, one of the things that I saw that one district is doing that I thought is a great idea and I would support is if a child doesn't complete an assignment in the time that we're off, they should still be given opportunity after the fact to complete that assignment. We're not going to get crazy about you know how yeah. things are graded, and, and you know I think we have to just be flexible, be flexible, and be very mindful and open as to what's going on. And I would just I don't know what other members of the board think, but if you wind up having a PD or something like that, I mean, I would love to be able to listen to that, so I don't know if enough of us want to that we'd have to advertise it at a special meeting or something like that, but at least if we could consider that. What if we did like an uh, early dis a delayed opening or something? Yeah, but so that the board members could come and at least listen to it so that we're aware of what they're asking, but I think if we reached quorum, we would have to have yeah. enough time to notice that. Yeah, well, but, you know, if the board decides that's what you want to do. I mean, you have to participate more to just yeah, learn, to yeah. hear it firsthand. Sure. So you don't have to do it twice, essentially, right? Yeah. So that we have an understanding of what it's actually yeah, happening. I don't know. I'm sorry. Go ahead. But two things. You're assuming that the staff is all going to be healthy. And oh, if, if, and if, if someone we is are well, in sure. a situation where, in fact, they contract this virus. Mm -hmm. Or uh, something else. Or, or something or else. Or someone in their family does. Mm -hmm. And that prevents them from putting up their Google Classroom. Sure. I mean, some of the things that you'll want to talk about with Mike, mm -hmm. Do they take a sick day? <laughs> well, you know what? That's not guy. You know, we do, that's questions we have to the county superintendent. I, we've actually been posting questions ahead of time to the county superintendent for Friday in anticipation of Friday's meeting, and that was one of the questions that was asked. So, if these days are counting and someone is sick mm -hmm. and they can't, you know, someone might be sick but still be able to right. do it at home, you know. But if they not, God forbid, they're hospitalized or something like that, then absolutely. Now, would they have to take a sick day? Yeah, I mean, that's... probably. I would think that would make sense because if it's a counting day and this is what it is, I mean, let me ask this question. You know, maybe Dr. Marshall, yep. you know, when, when if you're doing a virtual class and if you can't deliver that class, is that you have to, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but. It's very different. We, we tend to go to work yeah. unless. You college people. No, but keep going. We, no, we no, teach. Unless you're in no, but you also, you also can't right. see class. We don't have that's substitutes. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 right, so I don't know. That, that's Actually, a question yeah, we yeah, have in front of, of, the, of the county superintendent at this point. But it's a great point and a fair one. Or if a child is ill and it's just, you know, right. God forbid, it's a serious situation. Well, that's the other thing is accountability. Then I think our, our well, what, what's again, I think this is going to be tough. I don't think yeah. we're going to get crazy with anybody. I think we're going to, you know, as, as we're going to ask teachers to be flexible with their kids, I think we're going to have to be flexible with our staff and do the best we can. And I think, though, that if that were to happen and the teacher became incapacitated to the point where they can't do what we're going to ask them to do, then obviously they're going to be in touch with their administrator who can either, you know, take over some of those roles or maybe another teacher can, you know, in other words, like classes. So, for example, you know, English 10 advanced, 
if we have three sections going on with different mm -hmm. teachers, you know, then maybe that they other teacher can other help way. supply yeah. some of the stuff or, or whatever it may be. Not everybody's at the same place at every time, right. but certainly we can, we can uh, you know, the way our staff is, they're, they're going to help one another if, 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 the, if the need is there. I meant the student accountability because the last time for the H1N1, we posted three weeks worth of plans, mm -hmm. and when students came back to school, sorry, couldn't do it, couldn't access it, we had no recourse. Yeah. Well, once again, we're going to have to do the best we can, and we're going to have to try. If we, I mean, in if high we school, are seeing, they for be what I would say is, in that case, and once again, this is more to talk, but I think that in that case, if yes. we see, if okay. the teacher, we, we can let our teachers know that if, that if there are children who are not doing the things that they're being asked to do on a consistent basis, then we have to, they're going to let us know, and we're going to reach out to them to find out why, right? So are they sick? Are they ill? Right. Are they just not doing it? Because that's another thing. Like, right? let me go back and kind of, you know, qualify my original statement: is if a child doesn't do something, then they should have opportunity. I believe in that, but at the same time, it's not a two-week vacation, and now I'll just do everything when I come back. You know, right. so there needs to be. If we're gonna. I think we can create a mechanism by which, if a, if a child isn't uh, producing what they're as being asked to produce, then we're going to inquire to that and find out why they're not doing that. And then, you know, can but we, I was just going to say, can we, you know, the um, when we send home at the beginning of the year, everyone's power school login and ID? We're like, working on that. But They're if, working on that right now. And it will have their Envision password and all we're that? We're working on okay. that all right now. We That's also just sent home, um, what's going to go home tomorrow to all the elementary in English and Spanish is the, um, if you are not logged in for Web Backpack. Oh, yeah. Obviously, I we can't that send that home that. on Web Backpack because okay. <laughs> they're not on Web Backpack. But if we if we were going to send home the hard copies of that, um, and, we're, and when I think we posted it on the Facebook page, yeah, so that's good. going to be another way that we're going to be able to push a lot of things out as well, getting people hope. I mean, you know, we're going to rely on every mechanism. I mean, we're going to use uh, the call, the automated call. You know, yeah. we'll, we'll do everything we can, and and I think we just have to realize that will some things maybe fall through the cracks? Maybe we're going to work hard to not have that happen, but. You know, once again, we're in uncharted territory, so you know there's going to be things that um, may not be perfect, and, and we just have to kind of realize that, understand that, accept that. And if we if we if we see something like, gosh forbid, we're out for a couple of weeks, if we see something three or four days in that isn't working right, so we make adjustments, and you know, and, and obviously communicating as much as possible with our with our families at home, you know, and do the best we can. So um, that's where we are. Uh, just a couple quick updates. The copiers are in. Secretarial staff is very just happy. Just in time. Just in time. Uh, <laughs> and the uh, access cards or, or ID cards are at each elementary. And this week will be at the intermediate. Uh, they're just getting out now. Intermediate and uh, uh, probably high school maybe into, into next week. So we're, we're progressing on those those two items. Um, and then finally, I just want to mention to you, like last year, the, the county superintendent st uh, still does not have a county business administrator, so he's asked for about four districts to help him review budgets, so I'm one of them, so I'll be taking a few days uh, out of the district, if it's okay, to go and review I other, grudgingly gave permission other to districts' budgets. Gosh, a year and nobody's hands applied while you're there, for Kenneth. the job, I wonder yes, why. You don't. <laughs> yes. A lot of people don't. Okay. Just coming back to this. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you Liz. both for staying. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for staying. Thank you for a great event, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is there so any good. macaroni and cheese left? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We can't. Uh, yeah, Are they here? Just you want to open it up? Do any, in case? Do any of um, Liz, the I'm public sorry. have can, a question for our Spexo folks? About yeah, just while we have public here, if uh, we have uh, questions for them. And one other thing, if I can mention, I know because earlier, you know, a few. Um, Few months back, we, you know, I know we talked about this that you guys take precautions all the time to limit Absolutely. exposure. You know, having food wrapped. You know, it's not open, and you know how you serve. So those are things like those bio um, uh, considerations that you guys do all the time. And, right? and we're eliminating things like salad bars, or okay. right? Things like that. We're still doing the maple. You're still doing egg salad.
we're working towards your work in this case. case. Right. And so that way, right. whatever your best time is. Yeah. No, go, ahead. go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, I just had a question about, um, Tina and Trina, uh, in the elementary school cafeteria. I know that we're still serving peanut butter in the OT, yes, cafeteria, that's correct, right? Okay. Is there, um, is that with all of the elementary schools? Uh, wait, pardon me, do not. Okay, right. Because there's a child who is a one in the Yeah. Uh, but is that, obviously, so that you guys have the capability of, of having the cafeteria be Trina and Tina free? Is that, I think that's more of a district institution. Just just by the, okay, the okay. if there's a situation, you want to email me or give yeah. me a call and let me know, and then we can talk about it with, uh. It's generally just dictated by the building principal with the okay. superintendent's right. agreement. Thank you so yeah. much for being Thank here. Thanks. Thank you. Um, can we have public or any public comment on any agenda item? No. No agenda. Okay. All right, Dr. Marshall. Public um, comment. Presentation of minutes. Thank you, Mr. Governor. myself. Minutes. Move to approve the following minutes in accordance with Board of Ed Bylaws number 168. These are the work meeting and executive session minutes of March 3rd, 2020. Can I have a second, please? I'll second. Any comments or corrections on the March 3rd meeting minutes? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Okay. Um, we're going to go on to policies and regulations. Ken, for 7510, use of facilities. Okay, this goes back to conversation of last week, and then I did put the, uh, if you look down on finance, just for that reference in case uh, it was needed, was the, which you know, spurred the, the policy discussion was the big red camps. Uh, so if you look, the policy uh, actually has not changed. If you click onto the regulation, and there are three spots, I did take this opportunity to review with Rochelle and our facilities people any issues that they're having like we do all the time whenever we're looking at, at a, a policy. So there, there were two things and in, in two additional things to the, the thing we talked about last week. So um, the first thing is on page two, it's the application uh, dates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so how, how it works is we, you know, we break down the priorities, you know, one being uh, uh, really school related in the town and uh, PTAs, so they, they get first priority over anyone, and then two to five on down. Uh, and, and we have, uh, because this was a problem, and, and I'm sure Denise remembers this, it used to be almost a race to see who could put in their, right. put yeah. in their application yeah. first. So mm -hmm. I might put in my application for two years down the line, wow. just, so, yeah. just so I, because if, because if I got it before somebody else, even if I was a lower priority, then I already had it. So we had to change that, and so we said that you can only put in for the for the upcoming year on these dates. It's been a little problematic just because these days everybody wants to put out a flyer, wants to they want to tell people they want to you know advertise, they want to let people know. So the we dates to me were just are, are, were too close to the July. So I'd like to move them back a month and see how it goes. So that's why you see a lot of the dates are were, mm -hmm. that were May mm -hmm. go back to to April, and then we can uh, go from there. So that's the rationale on that one on that one. The next one was page five, where we've talked about this a, f a few times now. We, when we first did the referendum, you know, the black box theater was something that was not on the schedule, of course, because mm -hmm. it was just created. And at that time, it was the feeling was to to leave it, see how it goes, to not open it up to outside rentals, uh, let our staff and students and everyone work with it first, see how it goes uh, before we opened it up. Um, I did. Out of coincidence, I got a request for uh, someone for the Black Box Theater, and I said, oh, well, we'll be talking about this, so might as well bring it to the board. It's a Pivotal Productions. They give high school students experience in musical theater, so they're a nonprofit. They are looking to house their summer show in the Black Box Theater. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, we do not have fees be because we haven't allowed it to be uh, used by the public yet, so I, I just kind of took a shot for discussion purposes at, at fees, trying to just think logically where it would fit uh, as far as auditorium, black box theater, 
and so on in the different schools. So the discussion is whether we want to uh, open it up to uh, outside groups or not. So that would be the first one. And then if, if yes, then uh, as far as fees go. So I, I haven't had a chance really to see any other districts and what they charge. I mean, I could do that uh, if we wanted to you know, postpone this a little bit, but I figured I would throw it off for discussion. And then the third thing that was on page six that we talked about, and so we changed the wording to uh, on a per event basis. I believe that's what we had talked about. I think Jim used those words, if I, my notes are correct. Uh, so that it's really not on a per facility basis, but it's per event. So if it's a camp, if it's a whatever it is, so that they could use the, the gym in a classroom or, uh, or a cafeteria in a classroom. So it wouldn't be, because as you know, in our, in our policy, we have a charge for the classroom, we have a charge for the gym or cafeteria or audit, auditorium. So that's where we got into the, the gray area of the policy when we talk about that, the, the faculty and coaches uh, discount as to whether it applied to two gyms, a gym in a classroom, or, or, or so on. So this would clarify that language if the board so choose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One, one thought on that, because I, I read it. Um, I think you'd also have to say that if it's a multiple facility usage, we either have to agree it's the highest of them. I mean, if, if it's the turf field in one classroom, are we really giving them the turf field at 30 bucks or whatever the classroom is? I mean, in, in this case, we're talking two gyms, so it doesn't really matter. But what if the second, what if it's gym and turf, gym and auditorium? <laughs> yeah, so you, know, you add any any small item, and suddenly it's, oh, yeah, we're going to go with that one. So it's just something to consider. I mean, we're in the classroom. But you throw in the turf, you might need that. <laughs> well, hey, look. Okay, any discussion and on any of this? Is the camp well, a second priority? A first, it's not a first priority, or is it? The camp, camp, the camp, camp. Which camp? The basketball oh. camp. Uh, actually, they don't even fit into a, a priority yeah. because it's a it's a it's separate part of the policy where Those their states faculty don't really go into effect for not like for yeah. like for they don't really go into effect for like soccer or the town or right. stuff like that. It's more okay. of a yeah. And if, if there was the a outside. if there was a conflict with the yeah. town, we would work we would work it out. So mm -hmm. okay. uh, that really doesn't come into play. So can I get the rest of mine out? just to be consistent. Okay. Um, well, also the asterisk on all the auditorium, the black box. I noticed it says, may be charged additional fee of school lighting slash te dash technician is required. Mm -hmm. Does that mean we would allow them to do it? or Because it doesn't forcefully say, if this is required, you must use ours. Because yeah. right. I don't want anybody else coming in and <coughs> using our black box that. equipment that we spend lighting, so much money on. Our yeah. I just yeah. think that it's be, But I just think it should be more clear there okay. and say that it's, you know, you if you if you require that, like lighting, says, you must, must like it says for the kitchen personnel. personnel. Like it says for the kitchen personnel. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Personnel. District personnel so are required. Mm -hmm. I, that second, piece should be on the single star as well. Other than that, I would just maybe suggest, that with the amount of money we invested in that black box, that maybe the fee be a little closer to the auditorium fees of the nature of it but I'm okay with it matching the auditorium all others. Yeah I think it actually is I'm yeah. okay with that. That's only fine. Fair price. Yeah I think no I Which think it actually should be higher. They're on yeah. all others. The, the not the high school and the other oh. one. I'm all thinking all about the one seven forty one twenty five. Maybe the same yeah. price as the auditorium. Well I think it would be the same price as the auditorium. Yeah, me too. That's what the high school auditorium? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's what I was talking okay. about. Yeah. One above it, not like below it. One below it's only yeah. 90 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Things that are in there, yeah. Absolutely. Right. A lot of expensive stuff. Ma match it in all categories? Yeah. 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 I think so. Auditorium, black box, auditorium. The majority thinks that's so. Like like I mean, first of all, it's also a supply and demand. It's not that many facilities like this around the people can rent, right? This is only our first Okay, is there Is there anything in the black box? We got to have one conversation. I remember we had an issue. We don't we don't want to rent out the dance studio because that you know, special floor and all that. Is there anything in the black box theater that might fall into that? Just, kind of just the lighting theater? and controls, but oh, those, like those we said, that's, we as long as we have someone there, okay. that's that's right. fine. Irene, did you have a question? No. Okay. Just do. Anyway. No, I think I think what we were discussing was um, that that there isn't another black box theater around. I, I don't even Brookdale think it's been on, it's been on yeah. the um, the regulation form here before. 
So maybe no one has inquired about it because no one really knew that we yeah. had it. Yeah. And now maybe word has gotten out that we have yeah. it. And okay. so that's perhaps I mean, the town, the, the town's not using it this year, but they used it. They had a summer program where they used the bubble and they also used the black box. But I don't think they're running Did we that charge them? No, we don't, no, we don't charge no, them. I mean, they don't charge us. We don't charge yeah. them. Well, we we kind of swap sure. things. We pass. Yeah. We barter. Yeah. Barter. barter. Okay. I like that too. Okay. Any other questions on this policy? No? Okay. I still think we ought to charge the same rate for a second gym, regardless of how many people are in it. But huh? I'm in the minority. I'm in the minority. Well, I can hear you. What'd you say? I still think if you're if the rate for a gym is X. The rate for the second gym ought to be extra, regardless how many people are in it. That this break came up because people came before us and pled ignorance or poverty. But it's smaller. Huh? It's smaller. We're not going to really do this. No, yeah, just saying. It's one vote. Unless I, okay. He asked. All right. <laughs> yeah, we asked what he said, yeah. Okay, financial management. Oh. Okay, yes. Let's go on. Oh, that was just there are four items for discussion. 8.1, Board of Education and Administration will discuss the MJ commuter requirement benefit as per attached. 8.2, Board of Education and Administration will discuss the use of facilities regarding summer Big Red camps. Per policy 7510, charges will be 475 per week with participant over 30 children and 250 per week if there are 30 or less children. The Big Red Basketball Camp, the Big Red Soccer Camp, and the Big Red Sports Camp. 8.3. Board of Education and Administration will continue budget discussions for the 2020-2021 budget. The School Business Administrator will discuss health benefit costs and other various budget items. And 8.4. Board of Education and Administration will discuss the purchase of three 2021 IC Core CE 54 passenger gas school buses through Wolfington Body Company, Inc., as per the Educational Services Commission, ESCN Cooperative Bid Results, Co op Bid 19 slash 20 22, in the amount of $96,609.71 each for a total of $289,000. $829 and 13 cents as per attached. Mr. General? Okay, uh, let's start with the easy ones, I guess. Uh, the, the New Jersey commuter uh, mm. uh, requirement, it's a, it's, a, it's a new benefit that the governor signed in. Uh, it really mirrors the IRS, uh, Section 132, where you can't, so this is employees of over uh, 20 or more employees or employers with over 20 or more employees have to offer this pre-tax. So this doesn't cost us anything. This goes under our list of 403Bs and oh. pre-tax things. So this is not a cost to the taxpayers. <coughs> it's a service uh, to the employees. And, and I don't know, there probably won't be many that can use it. It's, it's really uh, geared for uh, transit, for taking mm. buses, trains, uh, uh, parking, so there, it's it's very uh, detailed as to what you can use this benefit for, and it's two hundred bicycle miles. commuting. I love that bicycle is. Uh, I, I you guess can ride off some, your bike. Yeah, some things that you could use. So the vast majority of people in the district, uh, I'd be surprised if anyone could use it, but it is something we have to offer. So that's why it's on. There. Okay, uh, big red camps. camps. Basically, I put just put that on there in case it came up in the discussion, in case anyone needed to reference that. Uh, Maybe I'll skip the buses if, if we can, mm -hmm. and then we'll do budget. So the, the buses, and the reason why it's on the agenda now, I'd like to approve it next week, is because uh, as we've discussed in the past, the, the, the budget, uh, I mean the school bus specifications are with 29 built-in preschool seats. Right? So if we don't order these buses now, uh, there's a possibility they wouldn't get here in September. So with adding our with our new preschool rollout and adding you know four classes, um, you know we don't want to uh, or five classes. I'm sorry, uh, I don't want to be caught in September with the buses not here right. because I would I wouldn't be able to to get the kids to new classes. So I, I need to approve this 
important. Yes, and you, <laughs> right, you need to improve it before the budget is, is gone. It's important. Uh, so that's why it's it's why it's here. It's actually a couple of dollars less than I expected. I plan on adjusting the budget a little bit down uh, because the numbers came in a little bit better than I had thought. And uh, any questions on the buses? Okay, budget. If we could, if you click onto the budget, and if you click onto the uh, health benefit census uh, sheet first, please. And I'll just walk you through this. So without a doubt, as we've talked about, this is where, why this has made this budget work uh, easier, and I don't say easier, but more smooth than normal. Um, in, in this, in this, I just want to illustrate, you know, where we've been and, and where we are. And so, what I did was I took the census, uh, and the census is just our pure numbers of employees, how many they call them lives, or how many employees we have that, that qualify for benefits. And so, we have a, a chart here. It's really divided up into three. I use some colors on this. So, if you look uh, in a three different time uh, snapshots in time, so we have March first of 2019. You see in the yellow down the left column, and you have March of 2019, April 1, 2019, and then you have the March, you know, today, or not today, but most recently. Okay, so really what they represent, March 1st was before negotiations was completed. April 1st is when we completed negotiations and we went to the new plans. Actually, negotiations were completed before March, but that's when we were able to, to move over with the new plans was April 1st. So March 1st is where we were before the new plans. April 1st is where we were after the new plans and then a year later. So just to, to point out uh, some, some highlights, across the top you have each plan. Now these are the state health, we're in the state health benefit plan, which is a, a group insurance plan. It's really the school employees benefit plan. It's the teachers subsection of the state health benefit plan. And each plan from left to right, you have the direct 10, direct 15, and that's what these numbers are uh, on the top. Uh, the 1525, and then 0, 2030, and so on. Um, the first column, the direct 10, is where we were as a base plan that all employees in March and, and before, that was the, uh, the plan that it was available to all employees, and that's where you, you, where you see that the number, the 515 lives, uh, where the vast majority of the employees took that plan. It's also the most expensive plan. So um, not necessarily the best plan depending on your individual situation, and we'll talk more about that as we go. Direct 15 was the next plan, and then 1525. Through the negotiations, through the committee, through the, the uh, back and forth with, with and in conjunction with the union, we were able to settle on moving to the 1525 plan. So you have the 10, you have the 15, and then the 1525. And that's why that's in, in blue, the, the 1525. That's the base plan. So that is the, yes, right. correct. So that is the base plan. So when a new employee comes in, the, the, the base plan is with their offer, 1525. Now they still have the choice, and that's why when you, when you look at April 1st, 2019, and March 1st, 2020, we still have people in the direct 10 and direct 15 because they they are choosing to buy up, so with the you know with the board offers is the fifteen twenty five plan, and if they want a, a higher plan, then they can purchase that. So some people have stayed, and you and you can see that of course it went down from five fifteen to to eighty seven, and then down to seventy one. So I think as people are getting used to the other plans, that some of the fears are going away, and 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 more people are are leaving the more expensive plans. And, and remember, they're not more expensive for the premiums for the taxpayer, but they're also more expensive for the employee because they are, because they are contributing to, to these plans. So as we keep going, uh, you can see, and I, and I have in red uh, the Direct Zero plan because that is, that is a plan where out-of-pocket is the cheapest. Uh, it's cheaper for the employee contribution. It's cheaper for the taxpayer. There are some parts of that that may not uh, fit a certain person 
in net, if, it, if it's in network or you if you can if your doctor's in network it's a no-brainer right mm -hmm. but if you have some if you have some therapists or, or, or uh, uh, Special. specialists thank you if you have some specialists that may not be in the plan then maybe you would want to think about it right mm -hmm. and then through all this there's open enrollment and we went around from school to school with Cassie Pass Kathy Passantino and we discussed this with all the employees and so this is where we saw a large savings that we did not really anticipate seeing this much of a, of a change. So you can see where we had, you know, pre-negotiations for people in the direct zero. Yeah. And then that went to 234, which it, we actually had more people go to the direct zero than the, ba the new base plan on 1525. I'm looking at the April 1st, 2019 mm -hmm. section. And so that was good, it was a great thing because it saved the employee more money and saved us money. And, and again, we've seen this now, I've kind of pointed, tried to point it out, when the auditor was here with our surplus, and so we've, we've uh, seen the benefits of that. And that's really canceled out our loss of state aid. So th those, are, those are good things that, that have happened that, are, that I'm trying to uh, show you. And then, and it continues. And, and you know, in the beginning, I was worried that, okay, they may go, and then maybe there's a bad experience, and then, you know, everybody's saying, oh, you shouldn't do that because my, my doctor wasn't in there and I got charged this, because that, that, that type of thing happens, but it's been the opposite. Everyone's been happy. Uh, even my George oh, yeah. loves it. And, and he's, you know. Yeah, and if George likes it, he's then he's, you know, he's, he's, just, he's tough and as cheap as they come. So <laughs> he's saving dollars. Learn, he records from his master. Yeah, he, he records every deductible, every copay. He's he's up thirty five dollars. He told me yesterday for all the, the ins and outs of what, he, what he's done. So uh, and, and so you can see that the two thirty four from April is now gone up to is now up to two forty two. So as long if that trend keeps going, then that's going to provide the employee relief and and provide you know us re, uh, us relief in the budget. So it's a, it's a very good thing. Any, any, anything going on with the uh, number of people that declined? Is that just a you, you can see that there has been an well, increase. That's they, well, that's where they went. If you look at where they yeah, went. They went from direct ten to direct zero, and no, no. they more and, and more. Um, no, decline. I mean, no, decline no, completely. It declined completely. Yeah. yeah, but I'm saying if you look at if you look at there was an increase of eight in in direct zero or the, the zero plan, but the, the loss came. Where did that go? And that came from people going from ten, probably to zero, and then we had people also declining. Well, didn't we also increase? No, we did not. We talked about it. I know we talked. We kept the twenty five hundred. And and we did. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and you can. That's a nice segue to the next. The same. Spreadsheet. That's what is offered if you decline. Yes, it's twenty five hundred dollars. So I can oh, that's visualize that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If everyone so clicks on the next spreadsheet, there. Do you anticipate yeah. any changes or effect from the governor and Mr. Sweeney's sweetheart deal? Yeah. Uh, you know what? That's a good question. Uh, I, I'm kind of nervous about it because I don't know mm -hmm. what they agree to. I mean, first of all, yeah, the, the, the legislation hasn't even been introduced yet. The draft hasn't even isn't even out yet. So we'll see what it is. What I'm assuming from listening to what they said is that they're coming up with like a direct zero on steroids, maybe that mm -hmm. it's only in New Jersey. So that added network, Hyper in network. is, is yeah. even wow. even tighter because that's the only way that they'll be able to drive yeah. premiums down. And so that's the only way that they could give relief Definitely. on the other side. Because remember, when we, we did this, we, we did reduce our contributions for the employee. Uh, a quarter was a quarter of a percentage, quarter of a percentage, I believe it was. Right? Yeah, three point seven. We went from tier four to, to tier, tier three, three in, in, in yeah. three in three quarters. So Correct. yeah. So um, so that that's the give and take, right? So uh, so if if they're looking to do that statutorily. Then what I'm afraid of is that with our census here, where we have many people in the, that plan, the direct zero plan, they're looking at it. They may be the actuaries may be looking at it and costing it out as if because a lot of people are still in the direct ten or direct fifteen. They they haven't made the progress that we've made. So I'm afraid that it could hurt us, or at you know at best it, it would won't we, benefit us. it won't help us at all. So I, it really depends on how they do what they do. Yep. I would, did you want? No, I was, I was agreeing. It's 
it may end up they're going to get to where we already got. Right. 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 We're right. not going to see anything from this. Exactly. We're so but I do think we have an opportunity, <laughs> comments aside, Senator Gopal's helping draft. So you might want to say, like, we're concerned because we made such progress last year. Can you make sure that whatever you're doing does not right. disproportionately mm -hmm. or negatively impact districts who've made progress and can help us down the road? Okay. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll definitely reach out to you. He's helping draft it. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. What? Oh, did you say this Okay. Actually, All right. Next, next uh, spreadsheet. This is more the dollars, and and I'll start from the really the bottom up because this will answer some of the questions we just had regarding the client coverage. You see, the uh, what I did for your reference was really give you the rates of the fifteen twenty five we just discussed was the base plan. Uh, I'm. I'm looking at the bottom half of this sheet. Mm -hmm. And then you see the, uh, the direct zero, uh, so the premiums for those two and then, and then the difference. And again, the, uh, how it works, if everyone remembers, is depending on your salary, so it's a scale, uh, depending on the, the more money you make, the higher percentage you pay, and it's a percentage of the premium of the plan. So if it's 1525 or direct zero, it would, so it would depend on how much money you make, what plan you're in, and then what, cut, what level of benefit you have. So the lowest contribution would be someone uh, like our play, uh, like uh, maybe a bus aide, someone who's a lower salary in the district, and they're a single, uh, they have maybe direct zero, and they're single. So that, that could result in about a $350 contribution uh, because they're not making much. And their and their premiums are, are low compared to everyone else. Now, more expensive would be, uh, you know, a hundred thousand, close to a hundred thousand, or administrator that's uh, up to thirty five percent, and they have family coverage, and maybe they want to. Well, actually, if they wanted to buy up to to direct ten, that would be the the most they would have. Uh, and actually, that would probably be closer to fourteen thousand if they were buying up, but. Uh, regardless, it would be about over 12000 where they, they would be contributing uh, the employee contribution towards their benefits if they were at family coverage and they were a highly paid uh, employee. So that, that's, that's the way it, it works. Um, the average was about 4500 uh, Worked that out uh, between all, those, all the employees. What they contribute is about $3 million in, in total. And then if you look at the top part, we can look at more general numbers. Now, I've, I tried to simplify this a little bit because it does get a little crazy because our rates are based on the calendar year. Of course, we budget on a we budget on our fiscal year is June 30, July 1, but the rates for the state uh, employees health benefit plan is uh, are from you know December December 31st to, to January 1st. So that's where, if you remember, we had you know. The negotiations was one thing, and then we got a rate decrease. So we had a, a, a double uh, help to us. And that rate decrease, now you, you see a little bit of an increase because the rate decreases for the first half of the year, but then we're projecting uh, about a 5% increase on the second half of the year. So it kind of washes out. So the, the bottom line between the medical, dental, prescription, if you look at the totals row there, and we're almost at 13 million, which next to salaries, of course, as we talk about, is the largest line item in the budget. Uh, and we're basically staying about the same. So we're, we're, we are up a little bit when we look at the budget because of uh, new employees. And also uh, the 2,500 are, are not calculated in, in that because these are just the, uh, the employees so that what we pay the 2,500. But of course, it's important to note for every employee we pay 2500 we're saving uh, you you can see the the uh, mm -hmm. the premiums there depending on what coverage they would have had whether it was single or family we're, we're saving you know eight to twenty uh, something thousand dollars by by them not taking the benefits so those are those are the ins and outs uh, again it's a great year that we don't have a double digit percentage increase in our rates and we've done things to help that certainly and uh, the rate decrease overall was a good thing so this legislation uh, or, or possible legislation I'll have to keep an eye on so if anybody hears anything 
uh, please keep emailing me. I know Janice does, and if I see anything, uh, that's, that's good because I may not have seen it. Uh, One of the things they did. wanted to change is the formula for how much you made versus how much you pay. Right now, from what I got from that is that they're using that as a uh, as an incentive. So if you go to this plan, that, that it's you know they're mm -hmm. high deductible plans, or who knows how they're going to create this plan. But if the NJA is, is together with them, that, that that's a great thing because then they'll talk to the membership, say, okay, you know, if you're in this situation. We're, let's just say you're young, you don't have doctors yet, or, you know, uh, I know I always get in trouble saying that. Well, I'm right. uh, yeah. Otherwise healthy. Yeah. Uh, no defense. Health. Okay. So the, then maybe you can take this plan where it's an all New Jersey, maybe the network yeah, is smaller, because they get deeper discounts from the, this network of doctors, and so the premiums are lower, but what they're going to do in return is if you take this with the lower premiums, we're going to give you an incentive that it's only 1.5% of your salary, salary. changing yes. what you said i mean changing that scale i talked about they're, okay. they're going to give you a they're going to change it and it's going to be a lower percentage of out of pocket so that's that's the give and take so yeah. how it works out uh i'm not sure yet i'm not confident that it's going to be a, a great thing for us individually yeah. it could be could be great for other districts but i don't know how it's going to work out for us but, but we'll see thank you do, do we know on that Maybe Janice can answer this. Do we know on that? Is that something they would look? They would, they would force it on districts, or would it be probably your after? Next probably after. It's usually after a, uh, a next new contract. New contract. Okay. Well, for, and from what I read, it looked optional because it was an incentive. So uh -huh. you were going to get a lower percentage mm -hmm. of your chapter seventy contribution if you went through this plan. Right. So right. from what right. that's the way I, mean, I interpret it. It's probably the new story. Now it's in the contract. Right. So you'd probably have to do a sidebar for you to do it. Right. I would think. We could, could I mean, unless, right, unless right now we offer state right law, now. State law, you got to go to this plan. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't think yeah. that's that's not I the way I read it. But okay. now news stories, I, you never know. Yeah. But uh, I, to me, it, like, the way I read it, it was, it was that it was an option. We could probably add the option now because if no one wants to do it, they don't have to do it. If they do it, they're getting a lower contribution. And well, actually, it may be that we don't want it to. It. Right. That's Maybe that's what you're saying. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's gonna it's gonna be a good question. So we'll see. Uh, as far as budget goes overall, um, I have a little tweaks to the Kajit and the bus. So I, I have it down to like a 1.8, uh, you're at 1.86, or at like 1.83 now. Um, next week is our vote um, for the tentative budget to go to the county, to have someone to have the county review it. I won't be reviewing our own budget. <laughs> so probably someone sitting next to me will be reviewing our budget, Perfect. not review their budget to make sure. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so I just wanted to see if, if I don't know that we need a straw poll or anything. But is, is is everyone okay with where we are? Is there more things, more information, more things that we need to go over? Uh, you know, we can. We do have a little time after the tentative budget, um, but I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, I'd like to see us get it a little bit lower if we could, but I'm not disappointed with where we're at. Okay. So maybe um, if everybody can look back at your documents and maybe yeah. see if you have some things that you want to specifically talk about, um, since we only have a little bit of time next week, we can talk about a little, and if we need a broader conversation, then we'll go back, you know, clearly we'll go I, back. I would even suggest if, if I could, if yeah. I might, did if, did if we could approve it, because I have a lot of, oh, yeah, no, I well, have to do the budget to submit yeah. it. If we could, if we're pretty much okay we're you know we're not uh, oh my gosh no way did we approve the tentative budget and yeah. submit it and then on the 31st mm -hmm. is our next because uh, we're not here in the we're not on the 24th but then we have another workshop meeting then it would do exactly what you said if there are any other things yeah. we could tweak yeah. uh, yeah. but this That's would allow me to, to put the budget together and yeah. and submit it to the to the county because it's a you know it's a 90 page everybody does that yeah. yes 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 uh, all right, great. Thank, Thank you for all your work on that. Thank you. Um, moving on to instruction education, Dr. Marshall. <coughs> yeah, we'll do buses. It's all discussion. Uh, thank you. We have uh, three motions for consideration. Item one is to move to approve the attached memo dated March 5th, 2020, regarding staff professional development activities. 
in accordance with the attached uh, memo dated March 5th. Item 2, move to approve the Youth Art Month 2020 endorsement as attached. And item number 3, move to approve out of district public tuition for the 2019 2020 school year in accordance with the attached memo dated March 2nd, 2020. Item four has our discussion from executive session on the out of school suspension report. So, before we move and vote, anything on the art or any discussion on? Can I have yeah, a second? I mean, the art, the art month is just a, it's a, what we do every year. And I, 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 if you didn't get to the show last week, I, I hope you'll take an opportunity. It's there all month. It's it, it was outstanding. It is outstanding. It it, it is always outstanding. Congratulations to all of our art teachers who did an amazing job. Um, but it's up all month. So if you didn't make it last week, please try to get there. It's at the library, right? It's a library, yes. yes. Well, well it's the township. Oh, you touched my library. Yeah. Great. Can I have a second then second. on items one through three? Second. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay one through three. Uh, Mr. Dietrich? Yes. You sounded like me. Mr. Fuller? Yes. Mr. Gilman? Yes. Mr. Hyde? Yes. Dr. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Parlamas? Yes. Mr. Weinstein? Yes. And Ms. McGovern? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Personnel, Mrs. Parlamas? Yes. Uh, motions to move items number, numbers uh, 10.1 through 10.8. Do I have a second? A second. Thank you, Mr. Weinstein. This side of the table has to hold its Okay, Mr. Dietrich? Yes. <laughs> Mrs. Fuller? Yes. Mrs. Gilman? Yes. Mr. Hyde? Yes. Dr. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Parlamas? Yes. Uh, Mr. Weinstein? Yes. And Ms. McGovern? Yes. And motion's carried. Is there any old business? Any new business? I just want to bring up one thing. Um, while I went to the play the other day, I know Mrs. Fuller was there. We both kind of That's talked great. about this. Um, it was wonderful. The kids did an yeah, excellent job. job. It was really good. The was really sound, good. it was very, it was very um, disappointing at times during the play when you couldn't hear kids because I was sitting pretty close to the doors back there. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's the mics. I don't know if it's, and at times the music was maybe louder than the microphones mm -hmm. could be. I don't know. I know we have children doing, sorry. We have children doing the soundboards and We're things. Having that problem right now. Okay. So this, I mean, the acoustics in this yeah, room are not, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I don't. Were there? Hmm? I was, was there Friday. Friday. Oh, Friday. Okay. So I would just be, in, and that was a packed right. night. Yeah. I would just be well, interested to know, maybe from Miss Walker, who ran the play, because she was in the back the whole yeah. time, right, right. Right. to just say, is it, I, I know the kids are also operating things, so it could also be a learning curve of, of students yeah. learning how well, to do this. I was here Thursday. It was also pretty crowded. I, I, I mean, I heard a little bit of that. I didn't feel like it was significant. I mean, a little bit, it, sometimes it might depend on the, the child and how, Oh. Well, I can't say that. I don't know whether it was the child and how they may have been projecting or it may have been just that particular I think headset it's very on the child. difficult when you have a performance in a room that is not, and I'm sure it's not carpeted, right. so the, the sound is bouncing. Yeah, it definitely bounces in here. Which I, I understand, but I just, panel, I guess but I would be. Seats, and that's why the I would, like, I would, to, I would just like to maybe have a you, comp with somebody to have a. I know. Yeah, sure. that's why yeah. it was surprising yeah. that it was yeah. hard. To but maybe to look into, her. maybe to ask Miss Walker if she has any suggestions on it, since she's done it so many times. And this is probably a Mr. Amato thing, which is why I'm bringing it to you. But maybe also she may have suggestions of things you can get. Maybe there's screens or soundboards that we can rent for performances that would. I don't know. I have no idea about this stuff. But maybe there's something you can. You may know better than me. Because there you are soundboards on the. Correct. But maybe yeah. there's yeah. something else. I don't know. Just, I think just, to, just to talk to her. Because if there's probably better chairs. to look at, it, at, at what's going on with the sound system itself. Right. Because if it's and something that we need to add. Because a lot of times, sometimes yeah. the wireless. Yeah. 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 It might be the wireless and it's not picking it up well or something. What we need to do is. So I would just say to her. We were having that problem at the high school for a while. Yeah, exactly. I think we've really improved. Correct. So maybe figure out what's. Because if there's something that has to go in the budget for it, then. I would but like the, the best thing is having one person who knows what they're doing working with the equipment at all. Because when it goes, when it switches hands, switches people, it, it becomes. Well, the, well, but the also, same people that have done it have done acoustically, it. Acoustically, I mean, if, if you yeah. were building your own man cave, 
you would not put all the speakers at the front blasting exactly. that way, right. getting lost in the cavernous. And some are facing down. You, you'd, or you'd push a couple towards the back just for that reason. Well. So and it might be something that's inexpensive, but I think it's something that definitely needs to be looked at. Um, and again, I was just someone who was sitting here with my kids, and was in, but I happened to be in the back of the room. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, there were times where I was like, I have no idea what. what but asking for your money back was a bit <laughs> much, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> they tried to let me in free, but I always paid for them. But it's, it's true, and it's unfortunate. They work so go. hard. Right. I know. Let, let it go. go. Let, let it go. I everyone to hear what they're doing. Let it go. Well, and it's not a quiet room. Would you have given right? them a zero? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> I would never give anybody a zero. <laughs> But well, just only, to only, <laughs> only Jeff Weinstein yeah. would. Yeah, we'll get more than that in a little while. Hey, you should have seen my they, scores last year. Did <laughs> <laughs> oh, you get negative numbers last year? Blanks. You were up, up, well, up, up to zero? Be. It, it is. They, it wasn't. Kind of I just asked Ken, and he said it will be, and it is going to be fixed for Follies, because I just asked if they have had any. In this case, they're, <laughs> they're waiting on the old, putting in the uh, new speakers. The so other it goes part back to old business? Yeah, the practice they had last time was not, they were not using the is this at what school? At Dow Avenue. I asked him if the folly, if the, if the sound system had been looked into at Dow Avenue, he said that it will be fixed, that it was the new sound system was not being used, is what we were just told. If there's something beyond that, please talk to Ken or email Ken about it, and that would be great. Let me know. No, with the, the last practice you had, it, it was not being used. There were uh, practice, I think, coming up. Yeah. I don't know when the oh, practice is. Friday, yeah. Oh my! Well, the fires are Friday, but there's a practice tomorrow. No, but it's they will be using it for for Friday. But yes. Can I mention one other uh, thing real quick? Yes. Yeah. All right. Just a reminder that as of now, our strategic planning uh, last strategic planning sessions are next Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, Dow Avenue 345 at Dow back at Dow Avenue because we do are doing child care uh, yep. piece. Okay. And then uh, our board of ed uh, office at seven o'clock for special services. Three I'll send out an email. Just yeah. you know, yeah. just coming to work. Okay. Three forty-five at Dow. Three forty-five at Dow. Seven o'clock at the board of ed. Well, he just said that the strategic planning meeting for Dow Avenue is at is going back to the school, and we will have child care available, three forty-five. So that was what we just. Okay, anything else from the board? Yes, Ms. Gilman. I'd like to recognize our board member in this uh, Ocean's Heritage by the Historical Society. There's a beautiful article along with a wonderful picture of Denise in second grade. <laughs> Let's see, of Denise? Yes. Yes. Oh, you got to pass that she autographing these things? Put that on the screen, please. I love her on the Wait a minute, wait a minute. Mrs. Parlamas. You haven't changed, Denise. No. Are you signing these? Are you signing these? Beautiful as ever. Diligent as ever. And and everybody should go and see For the record, Mrs. Parlamas has not changed at all. Other than her last name. It is great. I think she wore that dress last week, right? Yes, she has something from the high school she goes to that. Yep. I don't know what high school. The women's suffrage exhibit is excellent. Oh, you're really good, yes. Yeah, it's I'll pass that along. I don't know. It is so not. Okay. Um, any um, public comment on any item? Yes, Ms. Hayes. We can hear you. Yeah. Come on up. What is the Ocean First Model Classroom Grant? What do you mean for professional development under professional development? Or? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think um, that's a, Ocean First makes grants available uh, each year, um, and people can apply for those uh, districts and individuals within districts can apply for those grants. Uh, we've applied in, in years past, and um, you know, I guess it's a work. It's like a, a technical assistance workshop, I guess, like an information session. Is that what well, that is, Scott? Oh, it was canceled? It was canceled today. Oh, for Friday? No, it's on there. Okay. No. Ocean First Bank. Yeah. Ocean First Bank. What did I say? No, no, no. Just so that they know. Oh, yeah. Ocean First Bank. That's a that's the bank. It's a class. Last year, 
on the university mm -hmm. gymnasium. I think really more so the building principles. That doesn't, I, that hasn't come to me. Um, I think that, I mean, I think if there was, a, a lot of these are things we've done and, and, you know, honestly, I think if it's something for like uh, lymphoma, the leukemia society, it's a pretty well known, you know, organization. They may toss it my way if it's something new, unique, or they're unsure about it to get my opinion on something, but um, typically it's still the And are there any limits? We in terms of how many you mean? We have a policy on fundraising, but yeah, I, don't know I don't know that there's a limit. We have a policy that's pretty clear about fundraising. You can't go door to door. There's certain restrictions, yeah. but uh, yeah. I don't remember anything. Yeah, I don't know of any limitation. Oh, there. You can't go door to door. That's one. No. no. Oh, I'm sorry. I said door to door. No. Yeah, you can't go knocking on doors asking for. Yeah, fix the speakers. Yeah, the acoustics aren't here, aren't we? I mean, Mrs. Max is wonderful, and I, I just heard about this about a year and a half ago, but is our school going to be able to I think I would communicate that to Dr. Ryan and, and also at your PTA meetings. I mean, obviously, you have teachers your that teacher are there and are part of, you know, mm -hmm. so I think that's a great conversation maybe to have at the beginning of the year and, you know, kind of coordinate that. And, I mean, what you say, I think, makes a lot of sense. So, yeah. but I think that just needs that coordination. We do that a lot at the, at the high school level because they don't want five right. clubs You're not right. 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 Yeah. selling right. cookie dough. Everybody's selling cookie dough right. at the same time. Yeah. So they, they do that coordination at that level. So. At that level, yeah. Yeah, you just don't want to be surprised. Well, look, food for thought. It does say in our policy, fundraising limits, either in scope or frequency, may be imposed by the BOA. It says we can. It doesn't say we do. Well, so but, I think, I, but I think, you know, we, I think we do that at the, you know, at the building level. We coordinate and... Right, you don't want to have 15 pie sales going on at one time. Correct. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. But sometimes there, we do want to balance like the jumpathon and things like that. That's teaching kids to raise money for a charitable cause, too. Right. So we don't want to completely give up on that piece of it just for the virtue of their school. But also, I know when I've gotten too many of them, I'll speak for myself as a parent, when I get too many of them home, 
they go in the garbage can, right? And I, I curate the ones that I'm going to invest my effort to. Instead of being spread out. We talk about it at PTA. talk to Dr. Ryan about it and maybe maybe even with your PTA board to see if there's things that you can suggest Absolutely. just like you said of, of spreading it out more and having a plan versus just is the job growth more hard is that a district sponsor thing because it seems to be the uh, PE teachers because if we haven't had ours yet frankly I'd, I'd love to cancel ours so that we don't no, I mean, it's, it's, it's it's done it's handled at the building level I think with those specific teachers you know through the building administration well, Okay, are there any other public comment? We didn't need pictures. Right? We go. Yeah. We check it out, and if, it, if it's a need, it's a need. If it's not, it's not. It's not. But it, it, there was a need, so say so go ahead and do it. So, so they did it. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot of things. It's a lot of property. A lot, you know, can't we don't always see everything. So if somebody if somebody says. Building principal would let the staff they would let the facility staff know because you, you know, let the principal know the principal yeah. would let the facility staff know and then the facility staff if they needed something would talk to Mr. Janeron about getting yeah. the facility something like that they wouldn't even talk it. to me they would just go and do it it's normal you know after the winter after rain it puddles it shifts it's it's a normal thing that they they do so they just did it yeah yeah okay any other public comment. She's just speaking generally, you know, in conjunction, you know, with as I'm part so of the board of education, you know, that you're not the board of ed will not be involved in that exact process. It'll ultimately be board presented board. to the board yeah. of education, who will if be asked to approve it. We have to approve it. Right. Right. Yeah. The expenditures. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that's it. So that's it. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Yeah, we, fund, we funded it, and at the end, it's going to come back to us for approval. We approved it to start. So we will see it and approve it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Voted, voted on this overall district strategic plan. I think it would, it's going to be presented to the board. And I didn't know that was made. Okay, I thought you were just drafting the plan and then that was it. No, Doc, once, after Monday, Dr. Ryan um, is uh, creating a, a team um, that will be the team that will work on all of that to produce the, the action plan items to, to move forward. So, and that'll be a community stakeholder, team staff, parent, you know. A representative um, team. And I'm sorry. Doctor, I've asked Dr. Ryan to to do that. I mean, she she's the building principal. I mean, I've asked her to show me who that who she's asked to be on it. Um, I don't have that yet, but um, I, you know, I think it's, it's it's her school, so I think she should do that. And, but I did ask her to submit those names to me. And what are the it's mostly going to be a lot of people, I think, from. Her school improvement team, her culture and climate committee. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know what parents that you know she'll reach out to, um, but that's that's typically you know where I think it would come from. And how does the board of ed get presented with it and vote? Like, do you read it at a workshop? No, we do a presentation. We'll be doing it. Yeah, I do a presentation to the board. So there's no like line item veto. I don't want that in. I want this in. It's either yay yeah, or nay. There could be. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, mean I, I think. You know, I think ultimately when it gets to the board, you know, uh, some of that, you know, it may, it, it may, you know, I'm trying to think back to, to the overall plan, I think we presented it, I think we just presented it at a, at a meeting, if yeah. I'm remembering correctly. And, you know, we didn't, we didn't go through, you know, it, to my knowledge, there was no line item striking or anything like that. Mm -hmm. it, um, but my, my chance, thought would be that we had a chance to review it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I thought we reviewed it first and gave input. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah. so I think we did some tweaking. But yeah. yes, you're right. At the presentation, yeah. by that point. Yeah, but I, you know, I, I think that I think or overall, something fuzzy. Is, we'd like it to be more this clear. Is, you know, the building's plan. I think it's important that what's important to that building's community is what is represented. Um, certainly, you know, if there's something that's completely outrageous that the Board of Education feels is not appropriate or they can't fund or whatever it may be, um, you know, but, but overall, I think the ideas are coming through what has been discussed all these, you know, at these three meetings and then will be, um, you know, it, 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 it's that community's plan. So, or the, go ahead, go ahead. not what you, you said, maybe we outrageous we couldn't fund, or the inverse, right? That we don't think it, that's, we th if we think it's lacking, or if it doesn't go far enough, we'll certainly yeah. voice that too. Right? I mean, certainly, you know, some on, it's going to be reviewed by central administration as well once the plan, you know, so there, there's going to be several layers of review, but I think that the main piece of work is going to be from the from the folks in, in that school and that, you know, that community. What do you think the timeline's going to be? What do we think I was hoping, I was hoping. Like? Eight, you know, eight, eight, by the end of April, that's that was the hope. I mean, I think that's one of the reasons why we've been we've been participating and sitting in on some of the meetings to listen to what's going on. So whatever comes out, we can say, okay, we heard that or we didn't hear this, right? Yeah, or this was a common theme. Why isn't it there? Yeah, why isn't it there? Right. Right. Yeah. But I, but I also, but but you all know what the common themes are, so that's something that hopefully would come out, and you know. Will there be a board of ed member on this um, thing? I don't think there should be at that point. Any other public comment? There wasn't what we did the district teachers plan. I think it would be more appropriate at the district level. <laughs> this is going to work, Alex. It's, we're going to get a good plan. Don't worry. Any other comment? No. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. Second.